Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Phoenix Rising podcast. Man, this week, I hope you are all having a great week. Apparently, it's been an interesting week for a lot of people. Um, One, like, we've got all kinds of things going on. Who knows? I feel like there's always something like Mercury Mercury retrograde. Almost couldn't say that or a full moon, or a new moon, or an eclipse, or there's some cosmic shift happening, or something. Um, But it has been a very interesting week, almost to the point that I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this podcast or not. Well, not the podcast, like this episode and this conversation, just because, yeah, man, it kicks my butt. So I hope you had a great week. Mine was all over the place, um, which makes, of course, this episode the perfect topic for today of trusting the process and timing of your life. I, so I had typed up, I'm getting better at the structure for myself with this. Usually I just fly by the seat of my pants, but I'm like, I should probably have some sort of notes or something. So I've gotten better at the structure of this, of like having, when I get like a stream of inspiration, typing it up. So that way, like while I'm in it, I'll have all these notes and everything and know exactly what to say And I'm so glad I did because I typed up everything that I wanted to say for this episode last week when I was very much feeling like, you know, it was just flowing through me. I was feeling inspired and like I did this meditation and like all this stuff came up, like trusting the process and the timing of your life. And so I like typed up all the notes for this. I think it was a Wednesday, a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And like I spent like an hour typing it out and I was like, yeah, this feels really good. Like this is exactly what I feel like I need to talk about. This is what I feel like the universe wants me to say right now. And I think I like (laughs) just I'm telling you this story to paint you a picture of in case like this was your week. So I think that was like a Wednesday. And I then like took this walk and I'm just like thinking about how wonderful life is. And I'm like, God, I feel so blessed. Like I get to do stuff that I enjoy, like life is so good. I'll record this tomorrow. I'm so grateful I got all these notes written out. Then the next day I woke up and it felt like I got hit by a bus and I was like, not recording a podcast today. I can't talk about like how great life is and how wonderful it feels because today I don't have a clue of what I'm doing and everything feels like a hot mess and I'm confused and all that. So it's just kind of funny, like one day at a time, one day you can feel like, It's rainbows and unicorns, and the next day you can be crying, questioning everything you're doing in life. So that was my week. I hope that you had a wonderful week, and hopefully this episode of Trusting the Process and Timing of Your Life finds you at the perfect time and exactly where you are. So with that introduction, welcome to the Phoenix Rising Podcast. I am Ashley Drummond. I am your host. I am a mindset coach and a nutrition coach. Um, If you would like to work with me one-on-one, basically like we do a deep dive into your life and your nutrition, doing lab work, figuring out your exact macronutrient needs, figuring out your daily caloric needs. But on top of that, the fun thing about doing it with your lab work is we can figure out what kind of vitamins, minerals, and extra nutrition support you need to help you hit your goals. Part of the bonus with that is you also get mindset coaching with it. So we'll do weekly accountability calls, check-ins. We'll talk about stuff like this. We'll dig deep, go through some subconscious programming and all that fun stuff together. So if you would like to work with me as your nutrition and mindset coach, head on over to ashleydrummas.com. The link is also in the show notes. There is a couple sections where you can schedule a discovery call with me under where it says, would you like to work with me? And we'll hop on a call and chat about your goals and talk about working together. So that's that. All right. So let's get into this. Trusting the process and timing of your life. You know, right before I started recording this, I'm reading through (laughs) my notes and I'm laughing at myself because I'm like, I wrote that? Like, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. Like, this is great. Like, this is what I need somebody to tell me today. So I hope that when you hear all this, it feels the same for you. I feel like the hardest thing in life sometimes is when you have a goal or you have an idea or you are set out to accomplish specific things and you have all these wonderful plans that like you feel so good about. One of the hardest things is when those plans change or and or 
when the timing of the manifestation of those plans don't necessarily happen exactly the way you want them to. So I want to talk about some of the processes of life and how I believe that life works for us. And hopefully it'll give you a little bit of comfort in understanding and maybe a different perspective on where you are right now in your life. So we have to understand that life is always working in our favor. Maybe not always working the way that we want it to, but on a very big picture level, it is always working in our favor. And a lot of times the universe is giving us exactly what we need, but it may not be exactly what we want. So we're constantly in this place of resistance. So we resist what we are being given, feeling like we know what's best. And we end up fighting the present life before us because we aren't getting what we told the universe a thousand times that we wanted over and over. But perhaps we are being given exactly what it is that we need. I had this experience... I don't really remember what it was about, honestly, now that I'm thinking about this, but I had this experience like a week or so ago because I was feeling very frustrated. And I was in that cycle where, I know everybody knows this cycle, where you're searching for something. So like, let's say you're putting out job applications or let's say you're like sending texts or emails or let's say you're searching for the right date or the right partner and everything you are doing is not working. So you get in this loop on your phone where it's like email, Instagram, Facebook, messages, close. Email, Instagram, Facebook, messages, close. And like you're aware of what you're doing. You know you're just like mindlessly opening all the apps but not actually doing anything. But it's like you keep obsessively checking your emails or checking your phones, looking for the answer to show up somewhere in there. The answer to why you're frustrated and why you're still in the exact same place. So I was in that mindset of just like, feeling restless, feeling like, oh my God, like I cannot sit in this discomfort any longer. I have to do something about it. And then this thought, or I guess like this new thought just kind of showed up and it was like, why is it that this is what I want? And I've written it out a million times and I'm super specific about it. And I've meditated on it like crazy. And I'm acting as if, and I am taking action and doing everything I possibly can. Yet the reality that I am living is not this. And the internal voice, call it intuition, call it the universe, whatever you want, gave this thought back of, well, you may not be getting what you want, but perhaps the universe is giving you exactly what you need. It was kind of one of those moments, like, as soon as I heard it, I was like, (laughs) damn it. It's probably true, too. And there's a great part in some of the Law Law of Attraction books. So Law of Attraction being, like, you attract what it is that you send out or, like, uh, we receive, like, the level that we vibrate at or the energy that we vibrate at. Um, But there's a great part in some of the books that states that when we ask the universe for something and we are very specific it will also deliver us to us the lessons and experiences we need to help us grow into becoming the person we need to become in order to receive the thing that it is that we ask for. So a lot of times we place our request to this higher power and then the response that we receive are obstacles, painful experiences, confusion, and all this crap that comes up thinking that Maybe the universe misunderstood our order or got it mixed up with somebody else because this is not what I asked for. When the reality is you are and you will get what you asked for, but you also will receive the things and the obstacles that need to come up into your life to help you grow, to become in alignment with that specific thing that you asked for. So, so much of our life is not within our ability to understand. There are constantly things that are happening behind the scenes that are all working in our favor for our highest good. But we can't see all of this until it's in hindsight. Hindsight always gives us 20-20 vision, where we can see how the timing and the thread of everything lined up so perfectly. When we are in transition, like I was describing how I felt, searching or asking all the questions, though, we can't see any of this. And when this happens, there are two mindsets that we can take, one that will serve us and one that will make us feel stuck, one that will empower us and one like I was in that I was like, oh my God, I'm so frustrated. So one of those mindsets that you can take is when 
you don't understand what's happening. You feel confused. You feel stuck. You're in a struggle and you can't see the whole picture and it's not making any sense. Nothing seems to be working. You can take the mindset that because you're in this place and you feel this way, you must be doing something wrong. You must be on the wrong path. You must be failing in some way. And the universe is just reflecting that back to you. And honestly, like we've all been in this place. We've all been in the place where like you are putting forth massive effort in action. You are doing all that you can to move the needle. And in spite of all this effort, in spite of all of your trying, you just cannot get things to move forward, to budge, or to open up. And you drive yourself crazy and you stress yourself out thinking it must be you and you must be doing something wrong. So two things here. One of the greatest things I heard recently, somebody tell me, because they heard me say, I was like, I am trying so hard to figure this out. And I'm trying so hard to like make the right choice. And I'm trying blah, 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 to like do this and do that. And she responded to me and she was like, just breathe for a minute. Usually when you are really trying, it is because you are not accepting where you're at. And the truth is right now you don't know and you don't want to accept that you don't know. And I was like, oh my God, you're so right. But like accepting the not knowing is the hardest part. So that's the one thing. The second part to this too is most of our suffering comes from us thinking of how things should be instead of opening up to how they actually are. And the less things look the way that we think they should look or be more how we think they should be, the more we are focusing on what's wrong and what we don't have. And we end up experiencing more resistance in life instead of letting go of what we think it should look like or how things should appear and opening up to the life that's in front of us and just trusting that. Because Sometimes you're truly not doing anything wrong. I actually told a friend this recently in relation to the dating world because she had gone on like a not so great day. She thought it was a great day and then it turned out to be a not so great date. And she was just feeling really frustrated, wanting to know, like she was literally looking for feedback of like, is it me? Like, what am I doing wrong that all the guys I like don't like me back? Or like, why does it seem like the ones who want me aren't the ones that I want? Or like, why did I get ghosted? Or why this? Or why that? And like, what am I doing wrong that none of this is working? And my response to her was like, what if instead of assuming you were doing something wrong, what if you assumed you were exactly where you were supposed to be and you opened up to the fact that these guys not working out is exactly what is right. Or perhaps that right now what you need is not the right guy. Perhaps right now you need to be alone. Maybe there's some things in yourself you need to work through. But regardless, what if you just assume the universe is giving you exactly what you need? Because out of all these quote unquote wrong things, some sort of less some sort of lesson or obstacle that you need to learn is setting you up to be able to receive the right guy. So a lot of things can be, let's say in this situation, you're looking for the right guy, but you don't really necessarily have the right perception of what true love is because there's still some things on self-worth and self-love you need to work through in yourself before you can receive the right guy. So instead, you're going through all these experiences with the wrong people that are teaching you how to love yourself. Or maybe it's something like you keep attracting people that remind you of like an ex because you still have healing to work on with an ex. Or you keep attracting people that remind you of one of your parents. And so you keep attracting that version of healing that still needs to play take place for my parent. But regardless, whatever is happening is happening for your highest and best good. So taking that approach, but also trusting the timing of your life. That's the other thing that I told her. What if you really aren't doing anything wrong? And what if the universe already has the perfect guy picked out for you with the set date that you are going to meet him and the exact way you're going to meet him and be together? So like it's set, like let's say it's May 1st, 2023, it's going to be at this random park, you're going to be sipping coffee and he bumps into you and spills it on you and boom, like love at first sight. 
Maybe that's how it happens. Well, here we are in February. No matter how hard you try right now to find the right guy, that date of May 1st is already set. You can't reschedule it. So if you knew this and you assumed this, what would you do with all these things right now? You wouldn't care. You would just go about your life. You would keep doing whatever you need to do happily and trusting everything because you already know like, well, whoever I'm supposed to meet, I'm going to meet. And the date is already set that we're going to do all this. And the universe has it all figured out. So all these guys that aren't working out just must not be the right guy. Or maybe it is a lesson. But the mindset also is partly us forgetting that what we need and what is truly meant for us always finds us. We don't have to go chase for it or searching for it. The timing and aim of circumstances will always naturally work out and sync up. Normally, when we are forcing, chasing, or desperately searching, it's the same thing. It's because we're resisting where we are at because where we are at is so uncomfortable and we don't want to learn the lessons that the present reality is giving us. So like I said, maybe your lesson is self-worth. Maybe your current reality, you are resisting the lesson because in this current reality, it's showing you that you're settling for less than you deserve. Maybe it's self-love. Maybe the lesson is surrender. It's trusting the universe and realizing you are not all in control. Maybe you're searching and constantly struggling, closing off to your current reality because your current reality represents your lack of trust in the universe and your need for control in life. I don't know. I don't know what your lesson is, but you do at any time. So when you're doing like I was doing the other day, like email, Instagram, Facebook, phone, repeat, rinse and repeat. Anytime you're like desperately in that searching, restless situation with your current life situation, ask yourself if you are trying to escape some sort of truth in your current reality. So you are trying to desperately get to the other side of it to avoid having to face it. But the issue is you cannot get to the other side and you cannot get out of the feeling of discomfort that you're in right now until you face it and learn the lesson. It's so annoying. I know I hate being in this place. I hate the constant like repeated pattern and cycle when it's like being in a maze and you keep going back down the same way and you're just looking for the exit. And so you're just like viciously like running through this cycle until eventually you just sit and accept and you're like, okay. Let me rethink about all of this. That's normally what happens is we get to such a place of frustration and desperation that we have no choice but to surrender and accept where we are. And then when we're willing to take a look at where we are is where we see the truth of the reality. We see the truth of everything. So we go back to the first point I was talking about of how when we ask the universe for things, but first... We aren't in alignment with this thing that we asked for usually because we have to learn that lesson and overcome the personal beliefs, the blocks or limitations that are within ourselves that keep us from receiving it. Because if we were in alignment with it, we would not be asking for it. We would not be searching for it. So the first approach you you can take, like I said, is you can take the mindset where when you're searching and chasing and forcing and not getting anywhere is to take the mindset that you must be doing something wrong, which we just went through where that's going to get you. Now, the other option you have, which is going to empower you and help you and support you is to take the mindset and the approach that perhaps you are exactly where you need to be. And that perhaps the universe is giving you so much love right now that it is giving you exactly what you need in order to grow, to get what it is that you want. Perhaps everything is working out for you. And when you let go of your shoulds of how things are supposed to look or how things should be happening, then you open up and free up all that energy to your current situation and what it is trying to teach you. So when we hold on to the shoulds and the forcing and the pushing, we kind of block things. It's hard for us to receive things like synchronicities and that like inspiration or those intuitive hunches when we're so blindsided to our perception of how things should look. When we let go and we open ourselves up to like, you know, maybe I don't know what's best. Maybe there is something in this current situation that is trying to teach me. And maybe if I open up to that idea, I can learn that lesson faster in order to get to the vibrational alignment 
of the overall goal or thing that it is that I want. From this place, you then have to just trust the timing of everything, trust the process, trust the path. You do not plant a seed in the soil, and when it hasn't turned into a flower within three days, immediately start stressing, Googling, researching what you could be doing wrong with the soil. Maybe it needs more sunlight. Maybe it needs more water. Maybe you put it in the wrong spot. Maybe it's a bad seed. No, you don't do any of that. You plant it, you give it sunshine and water, and then you kind of just trust and hope that it's going to do its thing. And eventually it sprouts out and turns into the flower when it's gone through its process and it's the right time. But we don't do that in our own life. We have one, we throw out a request an idea to the universe, and we totally forget about the process and timing of everything. We just assume, oh, well, I asked for this yesterday. Why isn't it here today? And it's like, well, you wonderful little dear child also have to go through a growth process in order to be able to have those things. Like that's just the way that it works. And things, these things always find us when we are truly ready for them. Saying goes, the teacher or the student is that almost got that right. The student is ready. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. The teacher has always been there though. It's just when the student is ready for the lesson. So the right teacher, the right books, the right friend, the right lesson, whatever it is, will find you when you are truly ready for it. So if you are not in an open place that you're ready for that job, you're ready for that relationship, you're ready for true love, you're ready for true friendship, you're ready for whatever it is that you're searching for, it's going to find you and you're not going to have to like fight and chase after it. So trust that when you are ready, the answers will appear. But right now you are exactly where you are so supposed to be. There's so many relationships that I have been in that have ended and time has gone by And yet I didn't fully have the closure I wanted, or I didn't have the answers that I wanted. And I would reach out to an ex to get closure. And I would journal about it and I'd meditate about it. And I would drive myself nuts, like clinging to this, like I want closure and all of this. And eventually I would end up exhausting myself from trying to get it. And then sure enough, time would go by, that ex would come back around, the closure would naturally happen, probably because I was actually ready for it, but also because the other person has to be ready for it too. And that's the same thing is it's like, so relationships, jobs, like you may be in a place that you are ready for whatever it is that you deeply want, but other things also have to get in that place as well. Everything is a match. Everything is a vibrational match. So if there's a specific job or an income level that you want, there is a vibrational match to it, but perhaps it's just not open yet. And you have to trust the timing and the process of this. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. There's a vibrational map to the type of relationship that you want, but just because you are ready for it doesn't mean the person who is the vibrational match for that is ready for it. Like everything has a match. It's just trusting it and being patient with it. Honestly, like I even did this thing with Bear. You guys know how much I love Bear. Like he is all over my Instagram, but also like he is one of my soulmates, like for sure. My little intuitive pup. But I did the same exact thing before I got Bear. For years, Bear was on my vision board. I knew exactly what he looked like, knew he would be a puppy when I got him. I had his name picked out. I daydreamed about having this little bundle of love and joy. And years went by that I did not have him. And I did not understand what I was doing wrong. I would search for this dog. I would visualize and meditate and act as if, et cetera all the things that quote unquote, I should have been doing. And then the timing synced up. And then I got him when I was 30. I was going through a rough time and it literally just one day I woke up and I was like, I'm ready to get a dog. I'm ready to get bear today. I think I'm going to get him. And I went to a puppy store. Yes. Don't judge me. It was a puppy store. I walked in and literally like right there at the front, like he was right there. The exact little puppy, everything that I wanted. And my brother, Michael was with me and I saw him and I honestly thought I was like, no way. I was like, this is too good to be true. So much to the point I was like questioning, like how much of it had synced up that it was like a Friday. It was a Friday in April and it was so busy that I was questioning it. And I told Michael, my brother, I was like, I don't know. I was like, here's what I'm going to do. 
if that is really him, if that is really Bear, that's the Bear that I have been visualizing for years. It is Friday, which means the weekend is going to be slammed. He is the most adorable puppy in here. But if he is still here on Monday morning, then I'm coming with cash and I'm going to know like that is my dog. And I left it like I totally let it go because I was like, no way. Like I woke up this morning just like, yep, today's the day I'm getting a dog. And the weekend went by. I came back on Monday and he was still there. And I was like, here you go. Here's the money. And now this is my child. And that's how it happened. But like even looking back, had I had gotten him any earlier, I can see all the reasons why it wasn't the right timing and why there was so much resistance to not having him that like the time he did show up was the exact time that I needed him. So, I mean, whether it's a dog, a house, a partner, a job, a friend, a car, whatever it is in your life that you want right now, trust the timing, stop resisting where you are, stop struggling and desperately chasing and searching and take the, and taking the old mindset that makes you feel worse about your situation, that you must be doing something wrong or you're on the wrong path. Otherwise you would have everything that you want. And instead remember that a lot of times before you can be a, in the place of receiving that thing that you want, you usually have to go through your own lessons and overcome certain mental and emotional blocks and barriers in order to be able to receive it. And usually you can find those lessons in the current present moment of life that is giving you the experiences and the people to learn from, to help you grow and to put you in a place of a mind of alignment to receive that thing that you want in life. Now, you don't have to listen to any of this I'm saying. You're like, yeah, that sounds really nice in theory. I don't want to do that. But unfortunately, what you keep resisting will persist. So you don't have to open up and face your current life situation. You don't have to open up and acknowledge those deep truths, fears, and blocks that you have inside of yourself. You don't have to do any of that. You can keep resisting all of it, but until you open up to what life is trying to teach you, you are never going to get what you truly want or where you want to go. And instead, even if you forcefully changed whatever the situation is that you are currently in, that you're wanting to change and escape, you will end up finding yourself in a similar situation with similar people and similar patterns and things because you cannot outrun the lesson that you are meant to learn. It's that simple. Like, it's an illusion to think that like, okay, this is not the job that I want or the environment that I want. So let me go find another one. And then you find another one. And then it's the same experience. And then another one. And you're in the same feeling. And then another one. And you're in the same feeling. Or same thing with a relationship, like, nope, it's this person. Let me go get another one. And then you get in that relationship and you still feel unfulfilled and empty. And you're repeating and repeating because you keep changing the external before you have actually learned the lesson. So <laughs> your soul wants you. Your soul wants you to be happy. It wants you to remove the mask the barriers and the blocks that are keeping you from living your life as your truest and most fulfilled, authentic self. Your soul wants you to be deeply happy and fulfilled. So it's going to continue to bring you the same experiences to help you heal and to teach you the truth of who and what you are until you have learned the lesson. Most of the times, these lessons are simply seen that the beliefs that we have had about ourselves or the fears that we have held on to for so many years are no longer serving us. They're actually limiting us and keeping us from what we truly want. But we have held on to them for so long because they're familiar and they keep us safe. So we've forgotten the truth. And the truth is that everything you want in life does exist and is available to you. You can be as happy, fulfilled, and your authentic true self like you want to be. But in order to be able to access that, you have to be present, surrender to the current life experiences you are having. And wherever the discomfort is in that, whatever in your life right now is uncomfortable, lean into that and see what is underneath that discomfort. What is it that it is trying to teach you? Are you in the job and it feels unfulfilling and you want a different job because you feel like the job doesn't reflect the self-worth? Is it because you feel like you're underpaid and you deserve more and it's a lesson of asking for what you deserve? Is the relationship that you're in like leaving you feeling empty because deep down you really want 
connection, whatever it is, you have to be honest with yourself, be brave enough to face it. Knowing this though, here's the beautiful thing. When you lean into the discomfort and you are willing to face it head on like that, you no longer will have to learn the lesson or repeat the pattern because you opened up to it and you stopped resisting it. So here's a quick story about this in my 20s. In my early 20s, I went through a pattern where I dated a lot of guys who were emotionally and psychologically abusive. I'm not talking about just like, oh, I dated one insecure narcissist. It was one after the other after the other. And I would break up with one, think like, oh, that guy was just nuts. I solved my problem. Then shortly after that, somehow I attract another one, fall in love with them. And in the midst of this, I am not understanding why in the world I keep attracting abusive partners. Part of the problem I had with this was I was embarrassed because on the outside, there was literally no reason for me being getting, for me being getting caught up with assholes. But for some reason, I kept falling back in love with them in the same trap. After about the third or fourth one, seeing the pattern, I got so tired of it. Like, I mean, it was happening fast. It's not like years were going by. It was like six months with this guy and then three months later, this guy. And then like eventually, like when it's that repetitive, I'm like, okay, clearly there's a pattern here. Like, let's be present and take a look at this pattern. Um, but yeah, after like the third or fourth one, I got so tired of it to the point that even some of the things that these different guys would say, they were all the exact same phrases. It was weird. Like, and I'm not going to use any of the exact things they said because that's not what, what was important, but like, like one to two phrases would be repeated. Almost like a weird, kind of like you felt like you were in a movie or like the Truman Show where you're like, wait a minute, like you're a different guy, but you're, you're saying the same thing. So I started paying attention. And I remember thinking like, that is really weird. Every guy has said these exact things to hurt me and abuse me. Now I'm kind of curious how all these separate people can be giving me the same experience. And I became less reactive to these things because I was aware enough to see a pattern and I became more curious about the experience that I was having. So I started to dig a little bit deeper and started like asking myself, like, when was the first time I ever felt this way? When was the first time I ever had somebody I loved or I thought loved me, abuse me or say things like this to me? And I'll never forget the day that it finally like all made sense. I opened up to the experience because like normally, let's be honest, if you're in an abusive situation, like naturally when abuse is happening, your, your reaction is going to be to escape, to hide, to run away. Because I was in a place of being curious about this, I will never forget when I finally opened up to it, I stopped reacting to it. And I just like became curious about the experience. There was one day I was sitting on the couch and I was having this huge blow up fight with the boyfriend at the time. And it was like a flood of a light bulb went off and everything made sense to the point that I had to stop him. And I was, <laughs> he probably was like, what is she talking about? Well, like, I remember I stopped him and I was like, oh my God, I totally understand what was happening right now. I realized that in it, it was not what he was saying, but in I, like, it wasn't what he was saying that I realized the pattern and identified like the deeper thing going on. It was in the response that I was saying to him. And I was going off on him, telling that like, you're insecure. The only reason you treat me like shit is because of your own insecurities. You don't know how to love yourself. You're trying to make me feel bad to make yourself feel better. All this stuff. And I kept going on and on and on. And it was one of those moments in life where you were like, this all makes so much sense. I realized in everything that I was saying to him It was not him who I was fighting or who I was saying it to. It wasn't any of my exes for that matter. It was from growing up in a childhood where love was shown through abuse and my own self trying to heal itself in these relationships. So I was falling head over heels in love with these guys who showed a familiar way of love with me because that's what I was searching for. I wanted love. And then this love that felt familiar because it was abusive. But then in these fights, I am saying the things that I never could say to these guys 
from my childhood, if that makes any sense at all. But so this was the pattern that I was stuck in. And so like and bringing all this full circle so that it makes sense for you is when you find yourself in a pattern or a situation that is frustrating you and it's driving you nuts and you're beating your head against the wall where you feel like you can't break through and you're chasing, you're searching, you're desperate. It is usually because that thing, there is something there for you. If you will just open up to it, there is something deeper in you that is trying to heal or something deeper in you that is trying to grow and your present moment is trying to help you do it. Whatever person is in your present moment, whatever situation is in your present moment, whatever thing is in your present moment, stop fighting it, face it head on. And then when you see it, you see, and if you are open to it, you will see it. Once you open up to it, open up to your own healing, it's that light bulb moment where everything makes sense. So relating it back to this story, like once I saw, I heard what I was saying to this guy at the time and like, I stopped what I was saying. And I was like, oh my God, my fight is not with you. I totally understand. My fight is this deeper part of myself that's trying to heal because my fight is actually with somebody else. What I'm saying to you is what I wanted to say to somebody else, but I never could. And like, I then began the deep healing work, um, the deep beliefs about what I had around love, about the type of love that I deserved. I started working on my own self-worth as a woman, all that pain. And after that, I never dated an abusive guy again, and I never will because that pain is no longer familiar to me. I no longer found that attractive. And now, even if I see a guy being like borderline abusive to a woman in any way, or I see anybody being abusive or belittling to any human being, I immediately like, I'm like, "Mm -mm, this ain't happening. And I put a stop to it. And maybe I punch him in the throat too. Like, I don't know. We'll just, we'll just see how I see I feel about it. But we're always going to be attracted, deeply attracted to the thing that either A, most wants to heal within us, or B, is trying to pull us greater to the lesson and help us grow. So trust that where you are right now, you are being given exactly what you need. Perhaps it is not what you want, but trust that it is what you need. So open up to it, quit resisting or ignoring it. And then remember that when you ask the universe for something, it always delivers But first, it has to deliver to you the lessons and experiences you need to learn and overcome in order to receive it. So if you haven't received it yet and it's frustrating you, look at your life and ask yourself, what lesson is here for me and what am am I resisting? And are you willing to heal that so that you can get what it is that you actually need? That is the only way. I wish there was an easier way, y'all. I mean, man, I'm telling you, if there was a way to bypass healing, I would spend all of my time and energy trying to figure it out. If there was a fast track to where we could just like have a thought and manifest it and that was it and we didn't have to grow and learn lessons, I wish I could. I would totally do that for every single soul on the planet. But unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, in the in the game of life, we are very grateful for the things that have helped us helped us grow. So fortunately, That's not how it works. And honestly, like the reward is always sweeter when you had to grow and do some things to get to it. Nobody ever appreciates the things that are just handed to us because we don't understand the value behind it because we didn't have to go through any kind of growth or lesson through it. So in order for you to get whatever it is that you want, trust that the process is prepping you and preparing you to not only be in a place that you can receive it, But also so that when you do receive it, you are going to understand the value behind what that thing or person or opportunity or idea is. It's going to have so much more value. And maybe right now you are in a place that you would truly understand the value to it, which is why you don't have it. All right. I hope that that podcast like hit home for you. I hope that like, you're like, man, thank God. It wasn't just me that had a weird week. No, you know what? It was me too. I mean, I was all over the place. I was like, listen, I do want to make one thing clear. Just because I do this podcast does not mean that every day I have a great day. There are plenty of times I do this podcast and the next day I feel like I'm losing my mind because I have so many anxious thoughts and confusion happening. So 
I tell you these things because I just share with you the tools, the lessons, and the processes that have helped me to continue to move forward and keep growing and evolving and eventually like getting to the places where you feel like you're flowing with life. I mean, that's ultimately what we all want is to feel like we are in flow with our life, but also to feel like we are living a life that is most authentic and connected to our most genuine self. And in order to do that, you have to be willing to go within to connect to that deepest part of yourself. So I hope that this gives you some camaraderie and solidarity that you're not alone in your experience. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this podcast, as always, please make sure to subscribe as new episodes come out every single week. Also, screenshot this podcast and tag me on Instagram. It's just my name, at Ashley Drama. And some of you guys have been doing that, and it makes me so happy. Um, I also appreciate when you guys leave comments or messages telling me like which podcast you enjoyed. So thank you for doing that. I would not do this if it wasn't for you guys. If you would like to work with me as your mindset coach and your nutrition coach to help you just really step up everything in your life so that you can look your best and feel your best from the inside out, then head on over to ashleydrummonds.com and set up a call with me and we will talk about your goals. But until next week, I hope you have a wonderful weekend or a week and I will see you in the next podcast episode. Bye.